Modern cameras like the Canon EOS R5, the Nikon Z8, and the Sony a7R5 have very good autofocus systems, but occasionally they still get things wrong. They still hunt in low light, can produce jerky movements, or lose a subject in the crowd. Has Canon found a way to reduce hunting and pulsing in complex subject movements, in challenging environments? Will we see this in the Canon EOS R5 Mark II and the Canon EOS R1? Well, Canon addresses subject tracking in patent filing JP 2024-0454-67, filed November 2029, but recently updated on February the 7th and published on April the 2nd, 2024. Canon claims to solve the stated problem to reduce perspective conflict and excessive response when moving from a large part to a small part of the subject during autofocus body tracking. In this example, you can see my son and my wife moving across the ice. Now imagine them moving from the background to the foreground or vice versa, a little bit more quickly than they are here. Or if I'm zooming in where the subject changes size relative to the frame. Either of these two cases can result in the autofocus system getting things wrong, pulsating, hunting, or just responding too aggressively. I always find the machine translated Japanese text of the problem statements to be just a little bit confusing. But what the patent application is saying they've claimed to solve is whenever you have a subject in the frame, if they're moving from the foreground to the background or the background to the foreground, or if they're being framed a little bit differently, so they're making up a good portion of the foreground and then they're shifting their position, sometimes the autofocus will jump around and it'll be jerky. And the whole purpose of this patent application is to provide smooth, reliable focus regardless of the movement of the subject relative to the frame. And this isn't about performance. Both Canon and Sony are known for their fast and accurate autofocus systems. But to be number one here in 2024, it's not just the speed and accuracy of the autofocus system. It's the ability of the camera through its autofocus system to think like us, to pull focus smoothly and not jerky and not hunt, and even low light situations to respond a little bit more naturally, to maintain focus on the subject or object that we're following, to pull focus smoothly, avoid jerky movements, not hunting repeatedly through tough environments. We've already seen countless patent applications that improve autofocus subject tracking across Canon's lines of cameras. In fact, I think I can recall at least 12 patent applications over the past six months. This is something that Canon is dramatically improving upon in their new cameras. And you can see this with the Canon EOS R6 Mark II, how much, well, better it is at performing autofocus than on the four-year-old Canon EOS R5. And to expect these changes in the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, the Canon EOS R1 and future Canon EOS cameras is not only plausible, but it's expected. Canon recently registered three cameras in China, two of them stills hybrid cameras, one of them being a cinema camera. And the Canon EOS R1 was registered yesterday. So we have three registered cameras. We have NAB 2024 coming out in just a couple of weeks. So I would expect to start to see more details and leaks about the Canon EOS R5 Mark II to start to come out over the next couple of weeks, especially after the NAB announcement of whatever that's going to be. At that point, once NAB is over with, we can expect to see a focus on the Canon EOS R5 Mark II as well as the Canon EOS R1. So if you want to stay up to date on the latest and greatest, don't forget to subscribe and choose all notifications. But if, if there's one thing I want to caution you on right now, because I know there's a lot of this pent up demand for the Canon EOS R5 Mark II to at least see the specifications. But the R5 released four years ago is still one of the best cameras out there. And at a price of $29.99 at Adorama, b &H, Amazon, and pretty well everybody in the United States, it's a terrific deal. And at Adorama, you can actually pick it up for $29.99 with a 128 gigabyte SanDisk CF Express Type B card, as well as a card reader. There's a huge amount of deals on right now, and it's not just Canon, it's Nikon, Panasonic, and pretty well every camera manufacturer with the exception of Sony. And if you're interested in purchasing any camera gear, lenses, or accessories from b &H, Amazon, or, or so let me try that again, from b &H, Adorama, or Amazon.com, then please consider using my affiliate links, these guys right here. I've got them in the description down below. It really does help this channel grow, and it's, what, it's what's gotten this channel to where it is today. So a big thank you to everybody that has used them in the past. 
But I really do suspect after we get past the next couple of weeks, once NAB is over, it starts more or less on the 13th. Um, that's when everything gets set up. And then the 14th to the 17th is the main part of the show. Once the show is over with, you can start to expect a lot of leaked specifications, images, and pricing information, at least regarding the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. From what we're hearing, it sounds like the R1 might be coming at a later date, maybe a month afterwards. Maybe we'll get the announcement of the R1. This is just pure conjecture on my part. Um, it could be late June, sometime in June, or perhaps even early July. But it's really hard to say at this point because we don't have a lot that's validated, that's been authenticated from multiple sources. Although Canon Rumors is telling us that, yes, look, late April and early May are possible. And lately in his latest post, he said that, you know what, May makes the most sense. So we're getting there. We're getting very, very close. Uh, for anybody who's worried about this going into 2025, don't. Uh, there is a potential chance, though, if, if the R5 Mark II or even the R1, if either of these are seen as game changers over the predecessors, the amount of pre-orders is going to go absolutely nuts. So you'll want to follow my live stream when I know the date of the announcement and pre-order whether you're interested or not, because you can always cancel the pre-order later. But the R5 Mark II, from what I'm gathering, I think this camera is going to be a solid update, but I don't think it's going to be a game changer. I mean, after all, the, R, the R5, the Mark I, was already a game changer when it came out. I mean, how many times can Canon come out with a game changer? It doesn't, I don't think it's really plausible, but what a solid upgrade means? Well, we'll just have to wait and see because we don't have any valid, credible specs at this point. But I want to say a big thank you to you for watching, for commenting, for liking video after video. Have yourself a great day and we'll see you again soon.